what would you say your biggest problem in life? Hmm, I would say finding a good restaurant. If someone could just build an AI for this, oh God, would change my life. I would say booking flights. <laughs> if someone could just build an AI for this, that would be life changing. Fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> Easy. Finding clothes I like is so hard. If someone could just build an AI for this, I would pay a thousand dollars a month. A thousand? Without even blinking. Yes, this is more important than science. Hmm. Is it okay, so I don't know if people like those jokes, but I've been just having a lot of fun lately with Sora too, experimenting and trying to create these funny posts. Uh, but yeah, let me know in the comments if I should stop doing them. Uh, but yeah, today uh, we are looking at Imagine with Claude. I don't know if you've seen this. Uh, I've tested it out a few times and I thought, yeah, why not just make a video on it? Because it is pretty interesting and it could kind of be some part of the future of uh, coding, software, everything, right? So, Claude Imagine or Imagine with Claude generates software on the fly. So, no functionality is predetermined, no code is pre-written. What you see is Claude creating in real time, right? Responding and adapting to your request as you interact. So, I'm gonna show you how this works now. So, if we go here to Claude Imagine, I can turn off the dark mode now, I guess. Okay, so you can see now, imagine with Claude. So when I click on this now, we're gonna open something like a, yeah, OS. So here you can kind of see, this looks more like a, like a Mac OS, a Linux OS, right? We have some notes here, and down here we have like, um, uh, yeah, input box. So what we can do now is, let's say we wanted to add something to our OS here. Create a file explorer with a file name agenticai.txt, click enter. So now you can see we are generating kind of this UI here in our operating system on the fly. Okay, yeah, we get like a file explorer here. You can see we have a user documents. We are popping up with a file here, agentic.txt, perfect. And it says that this is 2.5 kilobytes. It's a text document, but of course this file doesn't have anything in it. It's just like an illusion of a file in our system. So what happens now if I click on this, right? Now we have to generate some kind of content. Either we do like a, yeah, we do a new pop-up and this file has to have some kind of content too. And now the, we have to write this, right? So you can see, Agentic AI, the future of autonomous systems. And we go on to create some text here. I wouldn't say this was perfect, but this kind of shows the idea of that we are generating this software on the fly. We did, of course, not have this file on our system because there is no system. Everything is kind of an illusion. So I can close this now. And now we can try to do some more things. We can do add a file name minesweeper.exe. So now we should kind of have this file explorer here in context already. So we should be able to just add the file down here. Yeah, it kind of understands that. It knows that this is an application. It has like a fake file size. So what happens if we click on this now? So we are kind of expecting when I click on this now that this, of course, what does it have to do? It has to generate a game because the user is expecting that this is a game, even though there's no code there now. When I click on this now, uh, this should, in theory now, start generating the game for us on the fly. And you can see that is exactly what it's doing. It's creating Minesweeper. We have some, yeah number of bombs, we have some rows here, and you can see it has to generate the game before we can play it. So I would say this kind of fail hard because look at this game, that's not how Minesweeper is played. Well, let's see what happens if I click on here now. So now it has to actually write the code for what happens when the user clicked on the, on the tile here. Okay, so you can see we kind of changed the icon here, so that means that we hit a mine. Uh, yeah, it didn't really show that, but you kind of get the idea, right? So let's close out this. We don't want to do anything more with this. So what else can we do here? Let's say this was your operating system and you needed to do some kind of Excel work. I need to do some work in Excel, add the following numbers, find a sum and do the numbers. Okay, so let's see what happens now. So now you can kind of see, okay, so we need to build an application that can actually execute. Uh, that is kind of the idea, right? So we can execute uh, uh, Excel operations and you can see we have the a force equals sum a uh, 1 to a 3 so now we should just add those numbers into this cell and we should get the sum down here perfect so was that the correct numbers anyway 
Uh, I don't know. It doesn't matter too much, but you can actually see we generated this Excel uh, program on the fly because the user said, oh, I need that for this operation. So, okay, so that was done. So let's see what happens if the formula is correct now. What if I say change this to 6000 and hit enter? Or let's say 60 and I hit enter. So you can see user hit enter and now we did the calculation, right? So you can kind of you kind of get the point here. So let's close this, okay? And let's do something else. So let's say you really needed to draw something. Uh, I need to draw a parrot on a canvas, but I don't have the software on this system. Help me, <laughs> right? So what happens when we press uh, enter here? And yeah, this is what we ended up with. Look how cool this is. It did even draw the parrot. And we have paint, right? We have our tools. It draw the parrot for us. I think that's much better than I could do in paint, drawing a parrot. If you ever need some kind of software tool, uh, instead of uh, <laughs> uh, buying it, downloading it, you can just use LLM's generative AI to actually generate the tools you need in time, right? Or in real time. So that is just super interesting. Okay, so let's see what happened. I do paint a horse riding into the sunset. Okay, so you can see we are kind of drawing the sunset first. We get a nice land here, and now we are doing the horse. Uh, is that it? Okay, we get some more. <laughs> That's a funny horse though. But yeah, you kind of get the point. We couldn't draw on the painting, but we could instruct the software to draw the painting for us. Okay, so I think you kind of pretty get, uh, get what I mean here now. So let's see what happens if I click on Claude Code here. So, <laughs> of course, now it has to try to generate Claude Code. Uh, I guess they already have the context put into this, but you get the idea, right? I could, in theory, generate Claude Code from scratch if I just wanted to use it. So, yeah, you can get the point. This looks exactly like Claude Code. I guess it has some kind of uh, um, context here on this. Uh, but, yeah, that is kind of the idea. Building software on the fly. Could this be the new... Uh, paradigm in uh, how to use a computer. I think it actually could be but of course uh, a lot of things have to happen before that is viable and <laughs> I thought it was just an, a very interesting way of thinking about things. Uh, it's, it's not like a new thought but I think they could, did a pretty good job here of uh, kind of giving like a demo of how this could work in the future. So yeah, hope this gave you something to think about and it was interesting. I think it's only for uh, Max users now on Cloud Code, uh, but it will probably get available to everyone uh, soon anyway. So, so yeah, thank you for tuning in. Have a great day and we speak soon.